When Blackmagic Design released DaVinci Resolve 19, they included IntelliTrack. What is it? How does it work? I'm gonna show you in today's video. And before I get started, it is part of the studio license. So if you have the free version, you will only have access to the regular tracker, which I will also show in this video because I think it's useful for certain edge cases. So with that out of the way, welcome back to Creator Reality, my friend. I'm John and I'm gonna be your fusion tour guide today. So let's jump into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you what we're working with. Here we are in my timeline, and I've got a clip of me sitting at a light on my motorbike. Look at that. And we're gonna track that car and my helmet very quickly. So let's start by right-clicking and saying new fusion clip or clicking on new fusion clip, and then we'll right-click and open in fusion page. Now we're in the fusion page. We've got media in one, which is our footage, and media out two, which is on display in the second viewer. So the first thing we need to do is with media in one selected, we're gonna press shift space bar and the select tool window will appear. We're gonna type in track and it's gonna give us tracker. We have camera tracker, planar tracker, surface tracker. I already did a video on planar tracker, it's up here. Really cool video, you can do a lot of neat things with that. And in fact, with this regular tracker, you could do four point corner positioning if you want, but I just use the planar tracker. What do you use? Drop a comment below, let me know what tracker you prefer. Anyway, let's get back to it. So with tracker selected, I'm gonna click add and it's gonna add the tracker node right here. Over in the inspector, we have trackers, operation, op options, and settings. You can ignore a lot of this stuff and just get it working. The other stuff is kind of for fine tuning, but I'll walk through the stuff that I use on a regular basis. By default, since I have the studio license, IntelliTrack 1 is selected. And up here in my viewer, I've got IntelliTrack 1. And if I click on it, it kind of zooms in the area that it's gonna track. And I want it to track this car, right? We're gonna do that first. So I'm gonna pick a high contrast area, like the headlight, and just drop my drop my box on it. Look at that, it's just, oop, there it is. Over in the inspector, under tools, trackers, Adaptive mode, I'm gonna select best match and I'm gonna leave match tolerance alone. I will be changing that in the regular tracker because I find it works better with a change, but this one is so smart. It's AI or neural engine powered, whatever. Anyway, we've got our point and then we can just click this track forward and track backward button. Over here we have track reverse. So if we were somewhere else in our clip, you know, towards the middle, we could track back and we can track forward with this button. You can stop it and track reverse one frame and track forward one frame. Helpful if you need to fine tune the track, but not really necessary in like 99% of cases, right? So I just click on the track forward and back button and it's gonna go through and it's gonna track. And at some point, this car is gonna leave the frame. That's okay it's gonna be closer towards the end. And there we go. So now all these white dots, these are all keyframes for this tracker. And you can see if I scrub through that the IntelliTrack has followed it all the way up to right about there. And there we go. So it tracked the whole thing. I was wrong earlier. I thought the car left during this clip. Anyway, it's tracked. So now we need something to track to it. I wanna point out this car, right? So I'm gonna go click on my media pool. I've got my media pool here. And if you've dragged in any media like a green arrow, it'll show up here, but I save one in my power bins. If you don't see power bins, click on the, the uh, three dots there and show power bins. Power bins is a way to save assets that you're gonna use on multiple projects. So if you have green arrows or titles that you use or a subscribe animation, you can put all of these things in the power bins and then access them from every project. Whereas the master media bin, as I'll show in a second, it's just for this project. So if with master selected up here, you can see I only have this fusion clip and a couple of other clips that are in here. And one of them is a timeline that's currently open. But in my power bins down here, I have call outs. I've created multiple bins and I have a green arrow. So I'll drag it and drop it in and I will connect it to the green, so I'll connect the output of media in two, which is my green arrow, to the green triangle on tracker one. Blue is a mask, and the green is the input. So now with tracker one selected, I'm gonna come over to operation, and if you click on the drop down, you've got match move, corner positioning, and perspective positioning. We're gonna focus on match move today, 
And by default, it's foreground over background. That's the one we want. But for our green arrow, we want to select the Media In 2 node. And if you want to rename it to keep things clear, press F2 and type in green underscore arrow. No space is allowed in Resolve. They, they don't like it there. But we're going to move it over, green arrow. And if I press the 1 key, it shows up in our left viewer. Now, with green arrow 1 selected, shift spacebar and type in drop shadow. Now we added a drop shadow because you got to have a little pop, right? A little separation and we need to transform it. So let's do that now with drop shadow one selected, shift space bar and trans, there's transform. Click add, it adds it in line. Now we can rotate this and move things around. So I want my angle to be like that. I want the size to be a little bit smaller and I'm just gonna grab this arrow right here, right in the center and move it over the car like so. Now, our drop shadow is not right, so I'm gonna click on drop shadow, I'm gonna change the drop angle, and we're gonna see an issue here. If I control mouse wheel to zoom in, you can see this drop shadow is getting cut off because there's an invisible frame box around the green arrow, and the drop shadow expands it beyond that. So you're learning more than just a tracker today, my bad, slight tangent. We're gonna to have to run it through another transform. Pretty easy, we're gonna lasso select drop shadow and transform one, move them over. And then with green arrow one selected, green arrow rather, shift space bar, transform, there it is. Okay, it's in line. Now I can change my size to 0.8. Tab away, and now you see that our shadow is no longer cut off and we can rotate it a little bit more. Yeah, that's about where we want it. So I'm gonna come up here and fit, and then we're about done. You can see that it moves over. Well, why does it move so far? Well, that's easily fixed. So what we need to do is come back to our transform and it's way over here. So we're gonna move it to point at the headlight. Now, as it comes along, you can see that it's stuck to the headlight. And you could go in and do keyframes. So let's do that real quick. I want the tracker to start up here and we're gonna change the angle. So you're learning a lot today, boop the like button. I want it to start here. So I'm gonna click on angle and we're on frame zero, right? Frame zero. Now I've created a keyframe for the angle and for the size. And we're gonna bring the size down a little bit and we're gonna keyframe our center and bring that down a little bit. And then we're gonna scrub through. And right at the end, we actually want the size to be a little bit bigger and we wanna change the angle and we wanna move it. So I'm gonna click on my arrow, see it's white there. It means both of them are selected and there it goes. So if we go back to the first frame, you'll see it's gonna point at this car and voila. And you could get real fancy in there and track things and move the keyframes around and all that. This is just a demonstration. Now you have the building blocks to go ahead and track things and have it work for you. So. With that in mind, let's do a track on my helmet with the regular tracker. So I'm gonna click on this line here, the second half, the blue part, and that disconnects our tracker. So, well, it disconnects the green arrow so that the tracker um, doesn't have anything showing up, right? But with tracker one selected, I'm gonna press shift space bar and I'm going to type in track again. And I'm keeping it on a different tracker just to keep things clear for you. So now with tracker two selected, I want to add a point. So it's a regular point track. And then I'm gonna click on the delete icon next to IntelliTrack 1. So now we have point two. And if you double click on the name, it lets you rename it. So we're gonna call this point one, just to be clear. And now you'll notice that we have a different sort of box. And if I click in it, it does some weird stuff. So I'll control Z to undo. You have to click on this little box in the corner and then it blows up and lets you drag it. And I'm gonna put it right on the logo on my helmet and you'll see that I've got an inner box and an outer box. We're gonna make the inner box a little bit bigger so that it hopefully tracks the logo a little bit, a little bit wider. Yeah, there we go. And then just in case there's more movement, I'm gonna grab this outer box and drag it out a little bit further. What's happening is the inner box is what DaVinci Resolve is going to track. The outer box is all the areas in between frames where it's going to look for the thing it's tracking. So if you have an object that is moving faster frame to frame than what that outer dotted line box allows, 
it'll lose the track. So you have to make that dotted line bigger, that outer tracking box bigger, so that it doesn't lose it. So now let's go track it. I'm gonna change my adaptive mode to best match, and I'm gonna change match tolerance to 0.4. That's good. And now I'm at the start of the clip, so I'm just gonna track forward, and it's gonna run. Now, while I wait for that to track, because it's gonna take a while, the bigger that dotted line outer tracking box is, the slower it's gonna go. Obviously, depending upon your computer speed and your GPU and all that stuff, but the bigger the box, the slower the track, because it's looking, DaVinci Resolve is looking in more places to track the thing that you're trying to track. So since I made that box bigger, it's gonna track a lot slower than it would normally. So now that it's done tracking, I'll drag my playhead back to the first frame and I'll scrub through and make sure that the track followed my helmet and it seems to have done a pretty good job. And we need something to put on it. So let's do a, well, it says pissed off emoji. Apologize for the language, I know that's pretty foul. But that's what we're gonna do. We'll drag it into the green, connect it up just the way we did before. Go to operation, type in match move. Well, we need another transform, so we're gonna do that real quick. And we're just gonna make it right over my face, like so. And you can get fancy and add magic mask and all that other stuff in here, but magic mask tutorial is up there. And then merge that back in to make the helmet brim come above the, or in front of the face, whatever. You can get really creative with the composition here. It's a lot of fun. I do this all the time and I love it. But anyway, now we have our, our track and my face is now replaced by this angry emoji. So then we can connect our transform one back up to tracker one. And now we have an arrow and the face. So let's come back to the edit page and we're gonna let the render cache take care of things. If you come up to playback, render cache, mine is set to user, yours might be smart. If it doesn't automatically render it, you can right click and say render cache fusion output, mine is turned to auto. And if yours isn't rendering, you can just turn it to on. You'll have a red line that turns blue. And now that it's done, we can play it back full screen. How cool is that? Everything's tracked just the way we wanted. Bob's your uncle, you're now a tracking expert. Or at least intermediate, right? Hey, did you enjoy the video? Boop the like button. Do you have questions? Leave a comment below. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you're having a great day. So until next time, check out this video that YouTube has curated from my catalog for you to watch and have a good day. Really, seriously, just have a good day. John out.